Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. I'm bringing out a bite-sized piece of today. Just as the thumbnail suggests, Ethereum, although it may not be totally gone, it is going, going, and almost gone. So we're going to take a look at what the heck is going on with Ethereum, as I believe there's a little bit of a supply shock. We're going to talk about uh, Cardano being the second uh, biggest uh, blockchain as far as transactions lately. We're going to talk about uh, Voyager Debit. We're going to talk about also what I am the most excited about is uh, the machine. Alex Mashinsky is taking on some gold bug in a debate which is going to happen tomorrow so i cannot wait for this one but uh, let's just jump into what is going on which we'll talk about in a second let's just go over today's market and how things unfold and so first of all let's be honest not a great day it's uh it's tuesday it's the one i always joke about and i say you know hey if uh if you think that uh you know two percent or three percent drops in the traditional market is, is something awful just stick around for uh crypto digital asset market because guess what we'll drop 10 20 percent a day we just called it a tuesday well it lived up to its name today because <laughs> we took a hit everybody we took a nice little shelling shellacking and the market cap went from around 2.9 something trillion all the way down to 2.64 trillion pretty awful uh but not surprising i'm going to talk about why but bitcoin price went to 60,452 and what's really odd about that is that i mean even though it dropped below, below 60 for a little bit it always gets bought up and i'll show you that in a second but over this over the last 24 hours you got bitcoin down negative five percent ethereum six percent binance coin seven percent let's see any big losers shiba inu nine percent terra ten percent a litecoin eleven percent and so on and so on and so on so it was just one of those awful days and you just got to remember that uh these days when all these things you know just drop to the ground there's two types of people out there there's contrarians and there's ones that follow the herd so the ones that follow the herd everything drops down the first thing they say is everything's falling i gotta get out of here this is ridiculous and they start selling and the contrarians they're the ones that uh, instead of running away from the fire they run towards the fire and they say to themselves, you know what, this is an opportunity. I can't believe what's happening in the distance and I just see these prices go down because guess what, they're not going down forever. That's what the big smart money wants you to believe. When you take a look at these opportunities, you're like, man, it's another thing and we always talk about buying the dip. Sometimes it's just a little bit harder. But for me, I am just like, man, I just, <sighs> you're gonna force me to buy it, so I have to buy it. And of course, that's what I did today. And what did I buy? all ethereum and i'm going to tell you exactly why so when i talk about this story where i said eth gets pulled it really comes down to some on-chain analysis and my favorite place is crypto quant uh and i'm will definitely be releasing that video with uh with the ceo uh ki young jun about uh, uh on-chain analysis but just so you know when we're talking about the things that are going on this is the things that i see and when I'm looking at this, I want to take a look at first off is the price dip. Was it all because of miners who were selling? Well, in this case, no, it really wasn't. And then if I want to take a look at it, well, is it because like there was a, a big amount of, of leverage plays? There was a little bit. So just so you know, as people start to go long on Bitcoin and become super attractive, and then, you know, just some people will just start shorting because there's just too much money to be made. So take a look at those BYBT and you'll see all that. But I didn't really see a ton going on, but there was some liquidations, that is to be sure. Um, also, I took a look at the, the exchange reserve and see if, you know, did people start putting uh, Bitcoin back on the exchanges? And if we take a look at it, no, uh, really they didn't. Actually, they took a little bit more off. So, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't really uh, what was going on. And then before I get to the exchange reserve, I'm going to blow past that a little bit. This thing right here, the all exchange... All exchanges take or buy volume. What you want to notice about this, and I talked about this the last couple of days, is that once it hits a certain point, it seems like, see these purple graphs here? That's when whales and people just start buying up like crazy because they don't want it to go down to a certain point. And we can even see, like if I blow this up a little bit better, you can see that in all honesty, uh, lately, as this thing started to really wick down, Bitcoin started to really wick, wick down, around 59.8, 59.9 is when everybody started to buy everything up and you just see this massive buying of people whales and every individual out there because they are just dead set about keeping it at 60k and it seems like that's the new floor around around 60k or so and then um leverage ratio there was a it's extremely high anything above two 
is like way too much. And right now we're at 0 0.2 as far as uh, all exchange estimated ratios. But this is the one that I've never seen before. I have never seen it look like this ever in the whole time I've been covering. Uh, it's Ethereum, the exchange reserve, meaning the people that are taking uh, Ethereum off the exchanges as opposed to putting it back on. Uh, it dropped uh, magnificently over the last year or so and it was a pretty steady pull right and that's normal that's normal for these 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 study people just to take it off as time goes on they want to use it for you know for nfts to buy things in the gaming sector uh to pay for gas fees to stake whatever you want to do with eth which is it really has the most utility right now but look what happened today womp and it just fell off just fell off the planet and then if we even take a look at we, we go back two years like glassnode did I mean, you can see it wasn't that big of a thing as far as like a supply shock, shock that might happen with Ethereum. But just this last 24 hours, somebody knows something. And that person probably told a friend who told another friend. And they're like, let's get this all off. And now before you know it, you got people who are gobbling up Ethereum, taking it off the exchanges. I don't know what they're doing with it, but it sounds like they're not going to sell. And if you're going to take this much off the exchanges there's bound to be a supply shock. And when there's a supply shock, people are like, hey, I need Ethereum for my gas. Hey, I need Ethereum to buy my NFTs. Hey, I need Ethereum for X, Y, Z. Sorry, there's not that much to go around. But if you pay for it at 5,000, 6,000, 7, you see where I'm going with this? It's just like, there's not enough to go around supply shock. And then of course, if you have the same demand, but less supply, what usually happens? Price goes up. That's why I bought a boatload of Ethereum today, and that's pretty much the majority of what I bought. I bought a couple other things, but wasn't that what is it wasn't as big as Ethereum because I think that there's a big play about to happen. And I know people will say, "Well, that's kind of goofy, Rob, because you know, I mean, how much can Ethereum go up right now? Probably can't go up too much, but I bet you in the short term, it can go up pretty fast, and it's a safer play than some of these riskier things out there. And that's just what I'm trying to do: minimize a little bit of risk and get in where I fit in. So that's what we have uh, for that section. Let me know what you think in the comments, but uh, that's where I see it. And then also, uh, as far as like chains and things that are going on, take a look at this. This was the most active chains, blockchains, in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin doing a lot of things, right? You know, uh, El Salvador actually doing a, a ton of stuff as far as like uh, legal tender. Uh, a lot of different, uh, even banks and uh well, not banks. I think a lot of institutions, hedge funds uh, buying this stuff up. Uh, Bitcoin, 21.67 billion. But look at Cardano, 18.24 billion. What's going on? Are the dApps coming out? Is there a DEX that's already there? Is there some kind of like a, a super, super DAP happening? No, not really. What's really going on is that there's a, a bunch of uh, voting going on for the first decentralized exchange on Cardano, that's called Sunday Swap. And to vote for this, uh, because they're gonna need, what it is, is it's called an ISPO, an initial stake pool offering. And what people are gonna be able to do is take their ADA, if depending on where it's at, and they can stake it with a specific stake pool operator, it's only gonna be 30. And instead of getting ADA as far as rewards, you're going to get uh, Sunday Swap tokens as far as rewards. And if you were around when Uniswap well, they didn't do something like that. They just, they just gave a big airdrop to everybody. But you remember how big that was as far as when you got 300 tokens of Uniswap? Well, now imagine getting in early for the first DEX on Cardano with what they could potentially do as far as the speed and as far as the fees. I think a lot of people are going to get into this. And that's why uh, we, as far as uh, D News, I think that's uh, right down there, we want to be one of those stake pool operators. And I've been, I've been begging the last two or three days for everybody to vote for me. So I just want to say thank you so much for voting for D News. And we're doing pretty well. I don't know how well we're doing because we don't really know until uh, tonight around 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. or something like that. But if you got time and uh, you are so inclined, uh, just go to, well, actually, you don't have to, do, uh, you don't have to really go anywhere. I'll, I'll make it super simple. Uh, for the SPOs, if you want to take a look at it, there's a ton of them out there. All you got to do is when you're voting for vote for SPO, I'll link this in there. There's a there's a description uh, at the very top. All you gotta do is do this. See D News right there. All I want you to do is 
you can vote for anybody else in the second one. But for, for vote number one, that's D News. Vote number two could be, eh, it could be Paul, or it could be CCB, or it could be Ape. I did this before. I mean, I, whoever you want to vote for uh, in the second one. Let's just say it's Ape, right? And then uh, it's you just put 2.365254. It'll tell you a code. You're going to put that into your Daedalus, Yolroy, or Ada Light wallet, and you're going to send 2.365254 to your same wallet address. I know it sounds goofy, but you do that and then it's read in the blockchain and then that vote gets recorded and then off we go. So that is essentially uh, what is going on for uh, why there's so much activity in Cardano because everything stops tonight and we're gonna find out those 30. So if you could vote for us, that'd be great. I'm just calling on my markers and all those things and uh, that's it. So that's what we have uh, for that piece. And then next to last, just to let everybody know, I thought this is pretty good is that uh, Voyager is releasing their debit card. And uh, so far they've partnered with MasterCard. And what they're gonna do is they're going to, uh, the debit card, it pays you up to 9% annual rewards just for holding your crypto on Voyager, especially in USDC. So I'm like, so I personally just did this nice little thing and uh, clicked on the button and now I'll have a debit card. Why is this important? Well, it's because the majority of my money is not, actually it's not in banks anymore. I actually transferred over to uh, different exchanges and to my uh, ledger a, long, a while ago. But now that I have it in USDC uh, on Voyager, if I was so, was so inclined to, I could put a ton of that cash uh, right into USDC, into the stable coin. And then I could just use the debit card just like I use my regular debit card. So it's like seamless transaction. Oh, and also for all the people that haven't done what I've done already, they could just say, you know what? I don't know why I need my bank because my bank is paying me 0.0002% or whatever it is, APY. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, the money I have laying around, transfer it into Voyager, get myself a debit card. And then uh, that's, that's it. That's the big thing. So I, I think uh, this could be a game changer, especially for Voyager. And uh, let's hope it goes off without a hitch. And I'll let you know how it works out. But I think that's uh, one more utility. Let's see if the price of VGX goes up because so far my uh, prediction hasn't really come uh, to fruition yet. But hey, I still got a month and a half. We'll see what happens. And yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I'm sure that'll be a great one. And then lastly, this, ah, I cannot wait for this one. This is going to be great. So... Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius, is going to be debating this guy, uh, this gold bug guy. And uh, what they're going to debate is, is Bitcoin's fuel gold or gold 2.0? Couldn't come at a greater time for the gold bug because, you know, we, just, we saw a 10% dip. And of course, he's going to say, it's a bubble. I told you it's a bubble. I've been telling you forever. Right. So hopefully Mashinsky, you know, gets it to him and says, hey, look, is, uh, is gold really a store of value? Because... Over the last 10 years, it's about the same price. And if it's trying to keep up with inflation, which is 7 to 15%, depending on who you're listening to, it really hasn't done a great job. Just saying. And before any big gold bugs get after me, I own gold and I own silver. And uh, I have no problems with holding it. I'm just saying, why would I hold the majority in gold and silver when it doesn't even go up? And they even will say, well, store of value. Again, inflation. Is it really keeping up? It's almost the same as uh, putting it into the cash. So I would love to see this debate and see where it's going because uh, this guy on the left right here, the gold bug, he has been telling people to not invest into Bitcoin, I think since 2014. And if hopefully people didn't listen to him and they did, they'd be multi multi-millionaires as opposed to just holding on to gold, which is what he did a long time ago. And I know he made a lot of money uh, to really just be uh, even Steven and that's it. So that is what is going on. I will link, I will try to link the uh, link I'll try to link the link. I'll try to put the link in the description as far as how you can sign this up, sign up for this and watch this live because it's going to happen tomorrow. And also, just so you know, uh, Celsius is doing pretty good things. They've got a swap platform coming in. They've got it in a couple of states right now. And they're trying to go to all uh, all 50 states in the U.S. where it's going to be either low or no fees. I think it's no fees. But uh, they talked about this in their little uh, AMA. It's about three minutes. Also, they've got uh, Celsius doing a DEX, decentralized exchange. And uh, they've got plans for that to happen, I think, this year. And then also, lastly, just so you know, uh, if you want to earn free crypto, here's a bunch of promo codes you can put in. You just put them into your app. You just go to the actual promo code section there. And you can uh, put all these things in and uh, make a bunch of uh, extra spare change. So uh, check that out. And that, my friends, is what's going on. So look, I know it's, uh, it's a pretty bad day. 
Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, no one likes these days, but uh, these days when you, I can't tell you what to do because it's not investment advice, just investment pain. But for me personally, I just saw these dips and I'm like, I know where we're going to be. I don't know. I can't say that. I don't know exactly where we're going to be because no one knows the future. But I do know that as time rolls on, the crypto market will pick up exponentially. And I don't see us being at, I don't see us being at a 2.6 trillion uh, for this cycle. I see us at like a 4 trillion, 5, 6 trillion. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's more, or maybe it's a little bit less, but I don't see us sticking around here. I definitely don't see us going lower and lower and lower, uh, especially with, with what crypto, Bitcoin, digital assets have to offer. I just do not see it. So I can only see this play going one direction. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, uh, first of all, you stick around, thanks. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing. A lot of things to talk about are time sensitive, just like this. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.